Hey guys, it's John with Southern Drone Ops. So we are doing our training down here at Southern University. Uh, Dr. Hodges, I, I tried to do a live earlier and I messed up with microphones. So I have two on now. So maybe we'll pick it up this time. <laughs> anyway, she contacted me several months ago about wanting to start offering classes to their students with spray drones. And as you watch my content growing up in ag, my dad and granddad were crop dusters. She grew up in an ag family as well. Everyone here is so heavily in agriculture that knowing what these drones can do is it's only a matter of time before they wanted to add that to their program offerings. Um, Dr. Muhammad is with uh, Alcorn, State Alcorn State University. They have a partnership together to, the, to they teach their students together. He does their credentialing over there. So uh, Dr. Hodges got the T20. She contacted me, wanted me to come down and see what we could show them about how to spray, how our operations run, and how we could teach their student or how they could teach their students on how to use these in the field and how to be so much more useful and not hopefully just graduate with a degree but actually graduate with what Dr. Muhammad said an actual business actually an LLC ready to go because if they've already got the knowledge on how to use spray drones and scan drones that's going to replace so much for what's needed for a farm so when they go to start a business they're already going to be so far ahead so what we use are DJI drones and as we all know that has been a very hot topic for quite some time because of the ban of where they are from the country country of origin um, I understand those concerns fully but with what these are able to do it's it's something we really need to look at in a different light can we lock these out and change these to where they don't submit or transmit anything to the cloud yes we've been able to do that for a long time but no one ever talks about that. And in fact, recently DJI just changed that to where they're not automatically doing that anymore. So if it's a safety concern, I believe tomorrow Congress is gonna be talking about this. So I'd like this video to get spread and circulated around to say one that's uh, it's helped my family and you know I'm a third generation aerial applicator and i've helped tremendously in my region but now i've got two of the best educators two doctors at southern university and alcorn university that have i don't know Doctor, their profiles look so much better than mine on LinkedIn. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, um, but with what they've already done and wanting to add this and what they'll be able to show the uh, their students and be able to do it, banning DJI the drones would be a, a, a it'd be a death nail to in the coffin of of education. And so that would really only hurt our youth. It would only hurt our students. Um, that's just in agriculture. I mean, that we use those also in engineering and surveying lands all kinds of things that we use that for so before we just do a blanket sweep and a blanket ban it's something we should look at more and don't listen to me that's been in it that's seen how it's helped farmers how much it's more cost effective how it's better for the environment how it's better for in so many ways of, of what we can do with those listen to the educators who if they couldn't use these drones um, I think there's one American drone company that you're able to uh, use it spray there's significant significantly more and they're not as really available um, and as far as uh, to me I use DJI because their ecosystem is amazing the app they have that works with it and all the drones they track do so much together that I just think banning DJI would just I mean it would it would put us so far behind and yeah it's gonna hurt us but it's gonna absolutely really hurt our students and so I was gonna see we've been here with them taking them through uh, the spray part of it and now we're doing the scanning and Dr. Hodges from your standpoint if we couldn't have these what uh, we were basically looking into we may have more agricultural waste um, in the environment because with this this is precise timing we know that we can program this machine to go off and on for the areas that is needed to be applied so you're not applying more than what you need so that's kind of uh, being an environmental steward uh, over our, our land and property um, not only that with drones, we have the ca capability to see where the plant is stressed, when, even when the human eye cannot see it stressed. So if we can catch that plant before it gets to the point of no return, then that also increases what? Our small farmer um, profitability. And not only that, it also can increase the yield of our field crops in order to meet the current demands and future demands because our population is growing. Mm -hmm. So we need to be able to meet those uh, those goals that will be coming in the future. Right. And Dr. Muhammad, you do the, at Alcorn, you do all the 107 and all the credentials there. What do you see coming from your end if DGI was taken off the table and what would leave you for your students and getting them prepared? 
if you take DJI off the table, you're taking a lot off the market because the capability that DJI have with different type of drones that they have, they're one shop, get all the drones you need for all perspectives. But if we remove that, you're removing, you're crippling the students. Uh, agriculture is advancing, but we need to teach that advancement in the college level. Right. So what the, and also droning is bringing younger people back into agriculture. Yes. So younger people are gamers. They play games on the computer all day so they can learn how to fly the drone. And one thing about agriculture, if you're wasting time, you're wasting money. Yes. So the drone will allow you not to waste your time, not to waste your money. Sometimes you just cannot get to your field with your tractor or your two by four. You can always, an overhead view is always the better view. A higher point of view is always better. When you put the drone in the air, you can see the wet spot. You can see the slope. You can see some dead patches. You can do that in the field. There's more stuff you can do in the office with drone work than, than the tractor can do. So if you, you are leaving behind a whole group of people if you take the DJIs away, especially agriculture-wise, for, for our students because we need it. Because we need to encourage the younger generation to get them back into agriculture. That's your food, that's your clothing, that's your shelter. That's your life. You, uh, your life. Uh. You, have, you have to have that. And DTI drone, and especially with your training, we are creating jobs for our students. We're putting them in business. Yeah, you don't want to work for someone like yourself, you can work for yourself. Right. And clock yourself in, clock yourself out. And, but now you are having something you can uh, give the people. What you know, who you know, but sometimes what can you do? Right. So you can do this and say, I got my own business. Mm -hmm. So with the droning industry the way it is, drone has a bad name because, you know, they're fighting wars with drones. Right. So you hear drones striking people, you think bad, but when you come here, you see the benefits of having a drone on, on your farm. Oh, I yeah. think all small farmers should have at least one drone. Oh, at least I need position. to. Those other drones may be causing death, but ours are ours are helping with life. And like Doctor, that's right. And like Doctor Mohammed said, this is funneling youth back into agriculture. This is getting kids that are or students that were going a different direction that think farming or agriculture is we just play in the field all day with shovels or and if there's nothing to there's or, more to it than a cow or, and a yeah, more more to it than <laughs> or more to it than cow patties and stuff like yes. that. So there's so much more we can do with it. Um, and and so now these are these me these me may be like toys or looking but they are they're so advanced they're fun they give us information we've never been able to see before exactly. the scans i mean we can see the weeds in the field identify them isolate them and just spray those the environmental effects of it i mean we use less water we use less chemical uh they're the battery powered so we use a generator to fast charge the batteries on them um, using these for spreading we're looking to see the effect that has on carbon sequestration so i mean there's so many things that we are just now finally getting i've been in this since 20 2020 and the um the uh 20 20 yeah since 2020 and the advancement since then to now, oh my gosh, the capacity, the battery right. life, everything to where now it's like, we've got a lot we can do with this. And I hate for us just to get there and just to get kids, because I've got the summer that apprenticeship that I've got uh, seniors uh, in the high schools in my town that are coming out with me in the, in the summer and they're going around doing things in fields because they asked um, the technical center, it's like, how do we get the students ready for you know a, a career in agriculture? And with drones, I said, get them, in, get them on a farm. You know, they need to know how to drive a tractor and how to do dirt work and how to do irrigation, how to do everything from the ground up. Because while you can just be specialized in drones and do that, but if they can do all the jobs on the farm plus the drones, they can own the farm, run the farm, or pick any job they want on the farm. Exactly. And getting a high level education here, uh, Southern University has been one of the best universities I've ever been to. It's beautiful. I didn't realize walking around one, it's a lot bigger. <laughs> <laughs> they took me yesterday to go eat. They're like, yeah, we're gonna go eat over here. And I was, it was like a two mile hike. I was like, <laughs> it's like, it's like I am used to being outside, but do y'all have a golf car? <laughs> And then she, but then it was worth it because then when we got to it, it was a beautiful view of the Mississippi River. So it was gorgeous. Um, so, but it, it's it's been great. I love my time here. We still have a couple more days here. Uh, I just wanted to take this time because they're going to be talking about it tomorrow in Congress. Hopefully, this will get spread around a little bit. I just wanted to hear two of the highest level uh, doctors talk about in agriculture how this will affect if DJI drones cannot be used anymore. So, uh, guys, if you've got any questions, uh, comment, like, share, send them to us. Uh, want to see anything else? Let us know. Uh, but thanks for watching and. Uh, well, I can share this for us. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs>